All right, good evening, and thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Bogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well uh, this evening. These, uh, This is the current um, temperature normally for today across the world. You can see here plenty of warmth, especially across the uh, Arctic region of Asia at the moment. Of course, plenty of warmth uh, across, extending from the central North Atlantic into the British Isles and Ireland and uh, Scandinavia, Central Europe as well. Uh, really, the only part of uh, Europe that is noticeably cold than normal at the moment is down across uh, Turkey and uh, Greece, even the Balkan region, and up into eastern portions of Ukraine. There's uh, somewhat cold than normal, but uh, largely speaking, we've got a pretty warm Europe uh, at the moment here. Uh, cold across uh, Greenland, as you can see, uh, northeastern portion of the United States is uh, cold than normal. And uh, we did, in fact, see a minus 48 in, in Quebec yesterday morning, uh, temperature-wise. But we've got warmer uh, air that has now replaced that chill uh, through the course of today. But it's very interesting when you look at the um, the northern hemisphere anomaly here to date. And we've got um, a very noticeable cold across North Africa, if you notice here. Uh, we've got a uh, cold than normal extending from the southern prairie region of Canada and into the Great Lakes region, mid-Mississippi Valley, Ohio Valley, and into the northeast. We've had uh, a cold than normal month here. And this is in stark contrast, of course, to the warm December that we've seen. But it's uh, it's really across Greenland, the Arctic, and um, and much pretty much all of northern Eurasia has been warmer than normal uh, during the course of January here. And it's, of course, going to be very interesting to see as we go uh, towards the uh, February period and, of course, the final uh, meteorological month of winter to see exactly uh, where we're going to go as we go forward here. But if you notice here, this is off the, the GFS. Um, this is the two-meter temperature anomaly chart. And uh, it's, it's very, very noticeable if you play through the loop, we continue to see this theme where we're seeing the transport of the coldest air uh, over the, the over the planet, really, um, crossing over the top of the pole and into Canada here. And uh, you can see it very clearly uh, in this uh, run here, the transport over the top and into Canada here. So we've got uh, jet stream winds that continue to drive the, the coldest air out of Siberia and into North America here. And uh, this can also be correlated to the the, the, um, the stratosphere and the troposphere now uh, coupled up. And it's driving the overall uh, pattern across the hemisphere. But you can, can see here very clearly the air movement uh, moving across from, from Siberia into North America here. And if you look at the um, the jet stream here, uh, what that's doing is it's it's creating uh, you know a, a greater imbalance. We're seeing these waves of cold air dropping into the eastern portion of the United States. We're seeing the collision, and that is driving a strong jet stream ac across the Atlantic. And in essence, it's pushing the coldest air out of Europe. It's pu pushing it in towards uh, Russia. Uh, in the Siberia and then of course when you've got the jet connecting up between Asia and North America you can see the overall circulation within the northern hemisphere pattern here and one thing that is very noticeable is that area of high pressure just to the southwest of the British Isles that has been literally anchored over that region for some time the cause of that uh, uh, incredibly persistent area of high pressure is a little bit debatable. I reckon that there is a possibility of seeing the warmer than normal Atlantic playing a role in terms of continuing to keep that high as strong as it is. And what that's doing is it's it in turn with the jet stream is really continuing to keep Europe uh, warmer than normal. And it's interesting to see how the overall evolution of the pattern continues. But you can see here as we play it through the loop, what you've noticed is We've got the jet stream um, right up into the Arctic region and it's transporting moving air from Siberia into North America, continuing to keep the coldest air in the planet 
over this side of the pole. That, in turn, is leading to the stronger jet stream across the North Atlantic. And you get the overall cycle taking place here. And look at how strong the jet stream is here during the early portion of February across the North Atlantic. It looks as if we're going to see jet stream winds in excess of 200 miles per hour. So we're going to continue to see the active weather pattern as we go forward. And then if you look at the uh, picture across the stratospheric uh, temperature profile, you can see with the coupling of the stratosphere and the troposphere, the warmth uh, over Siberia, that is forcing the cold into North America. And then, of course, when you've got the core of the coldest air in within the stratosphere, at least, that tends to lead when you've got a coupled uh, a vortex um, situation between the, the stratosphere and the troposphere. That typically drives uh, more low pressure near Greenland, near Iceland, and of course the Westleys are roaring with this type of setup here. So you can see the overall idea, the, the overall picture. It's pretty clear to see what's taking place here. And to be able to break this type of pattern I think is going to be very difficult indeed as we go uh, through at least the first half of February here. As we play through the loop here, you see the warming over the Siberia side of the pole here. But as we continue to press through, you notice there's never really any penetration of the vortex itself. It remains strong on our side of the pole. That looks as if it's going to continue to keep the jet stream alive and kicking, essentially pushing the cold out of Europe. Notice here, as we push towards the uh, end of uh, week one of February, where it regroups, it re-strengthens back over the source region once again. So it looks as if there's going to be a, a very reluctant um, situation as we go forward in terms of any sort of weakening or any potential for sudden stratospheric warming. It just doesn't seem as if we're going to be able to snap this anytime soon here. And of course, as, as you're well aware, we are starting to run out of time a wee bit here as we go forward here. So this is the current sit situation. Lo and behold, the area of high pressure it's centered in the southwest of the British Isles. We've got a, a strong jet. We've got a, a low pressure conga line of low pressure that's going to be crossing the Atlantic. And uh, we are at least, at the very least, we're going to see the jet stream take a little bit more of a southerly track. That brings colder weather as well as stormier weather into the British Isles and we have fleeting cold shots if you will as we go forward play through the loop here you can see here jet streams uh, dip south we've got a uh, one system moves through colder in the backside another system comes in that looks as if it's going to be more potent and we're back into that kind of northwestly airflow but notice the position here if I pause the frame um, you notice here that the area of high pressure over the Atlantic is south. We've got troughiness to the north. So the air, in a sense, is not really coming out of a true cold source region. All it's doing is it's cycling around that area of high pressure over a warmer than normal Atlantic. And, you, you, you know, you just simply don't get true cold into the British Isles with this type of uh, upper air setup here as we go forward. But it looks as if we've got a few systems to speak about, a couple of strong systems at that as we go towards the uh, early portion of February when the jet really strengthens. But notice here this system coming into the British Isles. This is a uh, Sunday uh, at the end of the uh, Sunday period. That may bring uh, some uh, fairly noticeable snowfall across, particularly the highlands of Scotland. Then that feature moves through. We've got, uh, like I say, that chilly-ish northwestly airflow and then we've got more systems that come in uh, between the area of high pressure to the southwest low pressure to the north and um, you know it definitely will be interesting to see as we go forward in terms of how uh, much cold we can get associated with these areas of low pressure as we go forward here uh, let's finally look at the uh, snow prospects here off the gfs and uh, we can see what's going on here I do actually reckon we'll have the opportunity for the next couple of weeks of seeing maybe a couple of named storms with this type of setup as we go forward here. Um, that would certainly at least bring some sort of weather uh, to speak about. If we're not going to get anything major in terms of winter, cold, um, you know, you would rather have at least stormy to, to kind of try and 
um, counteract the kind of doldrums of, of the winter that we've had so far here. I'm just trying to find the UK here and select this for you. We'll have a very quick look at the snow prospects here as we go forward here. So let's skip through the loop. And of course, we can see uh, with systems coming and going, uh, the chances for snow always generally going to be across the northern half of the British Isles. As you can see here, this is that system on Sunday. You can see the snow, it lays down, then it kind of dissipates once again. We may be able to hold on to it over the higher parts of the country. But generally speaking, you can see without any kind of proper locked in cold, any snow that does arrive is very much transient in nature here. And you can see here as we go towards the end of uh, week one of February, it looks as if we've got something more significant in terms of deeper snowfall and deeper snow cover. But it's always over high ground, unfortunately, here. So that's it for today. I hope you have a good one. Uh, this evening and uh, I'll be back hopefully on Saturday with more of course if you like the video please uh, hit the like button and of course subscribe and keep up to date and of course hit the bell for uh, notifications as well bye for now